That afternoon when the earthquake struck um, in January, I was watching CNN and saw the breaking news and I had my wife in Port-au-Prince at the time and for the better part of 12 hours, had no idea whether anyone of my friends were alive or dead. Meyer was a Tufts University PhD student and directed crisis mapping for Yushihidi, a nonprofit that collects, visualizes, and then maps crisis data. And so I went on social media and I found dozens and dozens of Haitians tweeting live about the damage. And a lot of the time they were sharing where this damage was happening. So they would say the, the church on the corner of X and Y has been destroyed or has collapsed. And they would refer to street names and so on. So it was about really becoming a digital detective and trying to understand where on the map this was. So we called everyone he knew and put together a mostly volunteer team in Boston to prioritize the most life and death tweets and map them for rescue workers. For the first time, it wasn't the government emergency management organization that had the best data of what was happening, but it was legions of volunteers that came together and crowd mapped the location of buildings that had collapsed, people that were trapped in rubble, locations where water was needed, where physicians were needed, and the like. I think we've seen, not only in Haiti, but almost every disaster since Haiti, just an explosion of social media content. Disaster mapping groups like Myers realized that there was so much at stake and so much raw data coming from social media during natural disasters, they needed to come up with new algorithms to sort through the flood of information. We are drawing on artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, working with data scientists to develop semi-automated ways to extract relevant, informative, and actionable information from social media during disasters. So one of our projects is called Artificial Intelligence for Disaster Response. During the Hurricane Sandy, we collected five million tweets during the first few days. With the Sandy data, we've been able to show empirically that we can automatically identify whether or not a tweet has been written by an eyewitness. So somebody who is writing something saying the bridge is down, we can say it with a degree of accuracy of about 80% and higher whether that tweet has actually been posted by an eyewitness, which is really important for disaster response. I think that goes to the heart of why something like social media and Twitter is so important. Having these millions of eyes and ears on the ground, it's about empowering the crowd. It's about empowering those who are affected and those who want to help. These are real lives that we're capturing. This is not abstract information. These are real people who are affected by disasters, who are trying to either help or seek help. It doesn't get more real than this.